curb and cut the engine. He glanced around the street, empty. In the passenger seat, Ruccio hung limply against his seatbelt, mouth open and eyes shut, a red stain around the holes in his chest. Bagjack, Bagjack slipped off a glove and felt for a pulse. After half a minute, he gave up. Not, even, not much chance he was faking. When he'd offered Babjack the money, Ruccio had tapped his right breast pocket. Babjack slipped, slid two fingers inside the dead man's coat, careful not to touch the blood, and pulled out a bundle of $100 bills in a plastic bag. He counted quickly. There were 25 of them. Bonus. He stuffed the money in his pocket and felt around on the floor for the shell casings. One was on the floorboard at Ruccio's feet. The other he found in his shirt pocket. He had to laugh. What were the odds of that? It was a damn shame Ruccio couldn't keep his mouth shut. He was connected, cousins and uncles, but he just didn't know when to shut up. He finally said the wrong thing at the wrong time, and Bad Jack was sent to shut him up for good. He stuffed the money in his pocket, pulled his glove on, and looked around once more. Satisfied, he got out and kicked away the patchy, scabby snow that still clung limply to the sidewalk. It was an industrial district, body shops and machine shops and wholesalers. Today was Friday. With any luck, no one would find the body until Monday. He started walking. But he hadn't counted on the cold, the wind whipping down from the Nebraska plains and across Kansas and Missouri, sending temperatures plunging towards zero. Babjack had five miles to go and his feet felt like blocks of ice. He thought of using his mobile, but couldn't risk it. No one could know he was here. Up ahead, a lighted sign flickered as it swayed in the wind. Food, beer, cigarettes. Babjack's stomach growled on cue. Without pausing, he pushed through the iron barred door. The store was just a con narrow concrete box, dimly illuminated by overhead fluorescent lights. Shelves lined the left and white, right wall from floor to ceiling. Along the other side, so should a row of cup. Should have had that beer. Stood a row of coolers and a magazine rack. Two waist-high steel racks filled with candy and chips flanked the center aisle. Nearly every service was a uniform gray. The racks and the metal hardware on the shelves had that drippy look that comes from too much paint applied too quickly. At least the place was clean. Babjack stamped the snow from his feet and wandered over to the chocolate bars. Across the rack, a blonde-haired woman picked canned goods from the shelves and dropped them into a basket slung over her arm. She was short, five feet or so, and thin, dressed in elastic workout pants and an oversized sweatshirt. Get the can of, can of tomatoes off the top shelf. Babjack watched for a minute, then went over and fetched the can for her. She turned to him and smiled, and with a shock he saw the streaks of gray in her hair and the lines around her mouth and eyes. She was on the far side of 40, maybe eight or six years, eight or 10 years older than Babjack himself. Oh, thanks, she said. I was afraid I was going to have to literally climb the walls. No problem, said Bad Jack, grinning. She tucked another can away in her basket and glanced up at him. He towered over her, at least a foot and a half taller. Hi, I'm Bali. Are you new in the neighborhood? Bad Jack removed the smile from his face with the same care he would use to erase his signature from a letter he decided was better left unsent. No, sorry, he said, just passing through. Oh, well, that's too bad. He returned to the candy aisle, disappointed in himself, and grabbed at a crunch bar. As he turned to pay, he nearly stumbled over a kid leafing through a comic book. Say, mister, he said, buy me a magazine. Bad Jack looked the kid over. New winter coat, new Nikes on his feet, light brown hair peeking out from beneath a new Royals cap, not a charity case. Sorry, kid, no handouts today. No, it's not that, I've got the money. The kid looked around. They keep the behind the counter. Babjack realized what he meant and barked out a laugh. A nudie mag? Steal one from your old man like the rest of us did. The kid pouted and sulked away, and Babjack headed to the cash register, shaking his head. The man behind the register was old and Asian and skinny as a reed. The bald dome of his head poked out above an unruly fringe of gray hair like a mountain peak rising above the tree line. Babjack laid the candy bar down on the counter and tossed a dollar down next to it. I see you help the ladies, said the old man in a just-off-the-boat accent. You nice fella. He counted out the change and added a couple of peppermints. Thanks, Babjack pocketed the money. You from China? The man's smile had a few gaps in it. San Francisco. <laughs> Babjack took the chocolate and the mints and turned to go. As he passed the boy, he talked and tossed him the peppermints and said, stick to the comic books. The woman may have looked at him as he walked by. Babjack turned his face away. As he reached the door, it suddenly swung open in his face. A young man, maybe 19, maybe 20, sent Jeff Badjack backwards with a shove. 
The candy bar fell on the floor and the punk planted a foot on it. Everybody up against the wall, he shouted, waving his pistol like a magic wand. It worked. Babjack and the other cr customers crowded back towards the counter. Some clerk. Get around here, Jackie Chan. Not much of an insult. Maybe it was the only Chinese name he knew. Now the robber, for that's what this had to be, a robbery, had the clerk by the shirt front. I know, you're gonna get, I know you've got somebody in that back room. If I have to go looking, I'll leave a pile of bodies out here first. The old man said something in a language Babjack didn't understand, and the door to the storeroom opened. A stocky Asian woman with a big hair bustled out, eyes wide, unfamiliar words spilling out of her mouth. Babjack looked at the two of them. Jack Spratt could eat no fat, and his wife could eat no lean. The gunman had all five of them lined up in front of the cash register now. His eyes were wide, his feet bounced to a beat only he could hear. Adrenaline practically oozed from his pores. Nobody move, look straight, a set, straight ahead, he said. They stood there as he rifled through the cash register. When he was done, he came around and faced him. All right, he said, I want your wallets, your jewelry, everything, and I want it now. As the others hastily dug out their valuables, Badjack took a look at the gun. It was a snub-nosed 38 revolver, probably a Taurus or a Colt, old enough that the bluing was worn through in several places. The front sight had been removed to make it easier to draw from the pocket or waistband. Not much good beyond 10 yards, but in this concrete cell, it was good enough. The gunman stepped in front of Molly. She lifted her shirt tail and unclipped a butt pack, held it out meekly. The man just stood there leering. What else are you hiding under there, he said. Only a dumbass would try something like that. A beat cop could come through the door at any moment. Still, the guy probably had a heart on the size of the Empire State Building and he would want to grope at least. Babjack stepped forward and said, why don't you leave the lady alone? The punk's grin faded and he stalked over to Babjack. Is that what you think I should do? He pressed the gun to his face. Well, why don't I spray your brains all over the wall so everyone can see what you think? Babjack raised his hands to shoulder height. Easy, I don't want any trouble. Yeah, well, give me your wallet, maybe you won't get any. Babjack shrugged. He tried. He slowly lowered his right hand, reached up under his coat to his hip pocket. It was there in the gunman's eyes and his stupid smile. I punked you out, man, now you're my bitch. He had his left hand out, reaching, and when he looked down and saw it wasn't a wallet that Badjack held, his face didn't have time to register surprise before Badjack shot him twice. The gunman's legs folded up and he hit the ground ass first and flopped over on his back. The rest of them stood there staring. The woman was the first to move. She knelt down beside the prone figure, felt for a pulse at his neck. I'm a nurse, she said, someone call an ambulance. She tore open the man's shirt. Two ugly holes in his chest leaked blood. To Babjack she said, do you think he would have killed us? Yes, he said, I do. Then thank you for saving my life. She looked over to his shoes, battered and scarred, but still polished until they shone. We got cop shoes, she said. Are you a cop? I'm afraid not, said Bad Jack, and he shot her through the head. A fine red mist spilled out over the bags of potato chips behind her, coating them with droplets of blood. She jerked a look around, a stricken look crossing her face. Then her face went blank, and she fell across the body of the robber. The boy ran for the door. Babjack fired quickly, the bullet striking him between the shoulder blades, sending him to the floor. The elderly cl clerk stood stock still and mute. The woman beside him screamed and jabbered. Babjack shot the man and he toppled over like a tall tree. The woman clutched at his arm going down with her and Babjack leaned forward and took care of her as well. He quickly picked up the empty shell casings and tucked them into a coat pocket. He found five of them and mentally ran through the scene again. One was missing. Only one place it could be. Babjack gently lifted the woman from the robber's body. Her breasts were warm and very soft. He found the shell where she'd fallen on it, and as he lowered to the floor, he whispered, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I couldn't let this punk stick me up. Couldn't hang around for the police, not with Ruccio dead just down the street. Even cops can figure out that one. And I couldn't leave you and the rest of these people here as witnesses. I had to do it. I'm sorry. He took one final look around and started for the door. As he passed the candy bars, his stomach grumbled again. He grabbed a couple and stuffed them in his pocket.